So today's uh, chatting skeleton is going to be my obsession with horror movies. I know I'm like a Disney freak, but I'm on two ends of the movie spectrum. I really like Disney. I grew up with Disney. Disney has been my life ever since I was a kid. However, on the other end of the spectrum, I am a horror movie fanatic. And it all started with a movie called Drag Me to Hell. If you don't know what this movie is about, go look it up because I don't remember that much either other than this girl gets cursed by like a witch or something for some reason or another. And spoiler alert, at the end, she gets dragged to hell. It all started with that movie. And then ever since then, I've just branched out to horror movies. I am currently working on watching all of the Saw movies in order. I just got the complete uh, package from Saw 1 to Jigsaw. Which is funny because I watched, I think, a kill count on Jigsaw before I even watched Jigsaw. So I know what happens. It's funny because I'll, I'll watch, like, what the movie's about on YouTube even before I watch the movie. Which I know is, like, the stupidest thing to do because, m of course, like most normal people, you want to go into movies blind. Basically not knowing what the hell's gonna happen. But... I don't mind watching like the like the spoiler videos and then going to watch it myself because then I can be like, oh, so this is why that happened. And like, I, I love talking during movies and that's like a huge problem I have, but I love horror movies. Like I have a favorite horror movie um, icon and it's um, Freddy Krueger. I was Freddy Krueger last year for Halloween, a gender bent one. And I was so proud of my outfit. I even had... um. Uh, a solution for my face that would make it look burnt only problem is I didn't do it correctly and when I tried to peel it off it almost ripped my skin off so lesson learned gonna look up some YouTube tutorials next time I try to do something like that or I probably should have asked my hubby since he's a haunt um, veteran from not scary farm so he'd probably know a little bit more about that than me anyway um, I also have a favorite horror movie franchise and it is Saw I know it's like, why do you like Freddy Krueger, but you prefer Saw? I'm weird like that. And then my favorite slasher would have to be uh, Chucky because, you know, the idea of haunted dolls has always been, like, a thing with horror movies ever since, you know, horror movies became a thing. But I think Chucky does it best because he manipulates kids a lot of the time where most of these serial killers go after, like, teenagers and shit. If you're going to be, like, a real slasher, you got to go after the kids and just go balls to the wall, horrible human being. But, yeah, um, horror movies have been a huge part of my life. I, I tend to like the horror movies that some people, like, don't like. Like, one of my favorite horror movies is a horror movie called The Boy. Um, it's about this quote-unquote haunted doll that a nanny has to care for, and there's this amazing plot twist at the end that I feel like is worth the watch for The Boy, but some people say it was, like, had to be thrown in there in order to be unique, which, yeah, I mean, I can see that, but I think it's awesome because it's unique for its ending. But anyways, I recommend going to watch it. Um, the second one, I was disappointed in the trailer because of what had happened in the first movie, but I still wanted to give it a chance because The Boy, like I said, is one of my favorite horror movies. And Hubby and I did give it a chance, and turns out it was actually not that bad of a movie for what it did, although I still prefer that The Boy didn't have a sequel I didn't even think there was room for a sequel with how they ended it but in a way I guess with well actually I take that back with the way they ended it I could have seen grounds for a sequel but because of how they ended it I was thinking well this is how it's gonna end blah 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 I'm pretty sure it was this person doing it so there's no room for a sequel but once you watch the sequel it kind of makes sense of how they ended the first movie and why they ended it that way so they could start a sequel yeah, I mean, I just, again, I love horror movies. I love the idea of it. Like, I I remember um, when I first watched um, It, the It movies, the newer ones, I had heard about Tim Curry's It, and I had seen snippets of it, um, which seemed a little more comical than it was horror, but I haven't seen the movie in its entirety since I think it was just a mini series at first, and then they compiled it into a movie, if memory serves me right. So I want to see the original as well, um, just to kind of get an idea of how Tim Curry took the character. But 
Bill Skarsgård definitely went all out with with Pennywise and how he did the horror end of it because I'd watch YouTube videos of people reviewing this movie and what I learned was that um, the kids, since they were so young, whenever the bullies would attack them or Skarsgård would attack them, they'd always stop right after that scene to make sure the kids were okay, which I respect a lot because not a lot of horror movie um, actors or even directors would do that, uh, i.e. The Shining. I heard that when Stanley Kubrick uh, directed The Shining, um, the girl who played the wife, she was olive oil in the live action Popeyes. I can never remember her name. But when she was playing the wife, um, Kubrick put her through so much like abuse on set that all of her crying was real. Like all of her emotion was so real. And it startled me so much because I'm like, how can you get away with shit like that on a set? But then I remember that people on horror movie sets, action sets, whatever movie you're doing, they will go to extremes in order to get real reactions out of people. Like <laughs> one of my favorite that hubby showed me was with um, Parks and Recreation. If you guys haven't watched that series, I definitely recommend it. Amy Poehler, Rashida Jones, Chris Pratt, amazing cast. Um, there was... It's this, this didn't make it into the TV show. It just kind of happened. So Chris Pratt got everyone involved in this. He strips naked, stands behind a door, in order, and then next thing you know, Amy Poehler opens the door, and her face is gold because she didn't know that Chris Pratt would be standing there. Butt naked, thing hanging out. Just It was hilarious. And then another one, I think this was in the movie Django Unchained. Um... Leonardo DiCaprio was doing a rant scene and smashed his hand on the table and it legitimately broke and was bleeding, but he continued his scene. But it's things like that that make a movie so real. And that's why I like a lot of the horror movies, because sometimes when they try to get genuine reactions out of their cast, they'll make most of the scares a surprise. And that's why I love horror movies, because those some can be totally cliche, like been there, done that, seen it this trope is so old, blah, 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 they somehow still make it unique. Like, one of my exes really loved the movie Sinister, the Sinister series, because his um, choice of work was media, film media, and the fact that a monster could be trapped inside media and attack you and attack kids is absolutely terrifying. But of course, everyone has their own opinion on what horror movie they like or what video genre or movie genre they like, but I love horror, and I'm ever so picky, just like with Disney, about how horror is done. Because even though I like a lot of movies, I don't dislike a lot of movies. Um, when it comes to Disney and horror, I am so nitpicky because I hate the zombie genre. I think it's just so overdone. They, It's never really changing. The only zombie movies I can say I like are Zombieland 1 and 2 and Warm Bodies. That's pretty much it. I, I was interested in 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later until Hubby said it was about zombies. And then I just kind of dropped it because I I always think that it's just the same thing with zombies over and over and over again. And, you know, the only reason I like Zombieland and Warm Bodies is, one, because Zombieland makes it comedic. They put their own spin on it and it's absolutely perfect, especially with the second one. They added like levels of the zombies, which was amazing. And with Warm Bodies, they made the zombies like instead of the antagonists, they made them the protagonists, which was really cool. And if you guys haven't seen either movie, I recommend both. Warm Bodies is a nice movie to either watch with your friends or a loved one or whatever. Zombieland is good for your friends, definitely. Like if you want a good laugh and to just Hold your sides while you're dying. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I know the doll trope is also played so much like a haunted doll, blah, 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 which is why I like the boy so much because it was so different. But I feel like with doll movies, it's a little different because though the haunting, the haunted doll is always a common uh, horror movie theme. Um, if you take Chucky and then look at Annabelle, it's totally different. Chucky, you see this thing move as if it's a real living doll. With Annabelle, you never really see her move that much. You just see the possessed person that the doll took over, which is what I like about Annabelle on the Conjuring series. 
that's why I'm so nitpicky when it comes to horror movies and Disney movies, because if you've done the same thing over and over again, I'm, you know, I'm not surprised if your audience gets bored, because I know I get bored. That's why I've completely trashed zombie movies. But I never trash the doll movies because it's always different every time I watch a new doll movie. But anyways, that's really all I have to say about the genre. I When I start something like this, I feel like I could go on forever and ever. But at some point, you know, we all eventually run out of material to say. So thank you guys so much for watching this Chatting Skeletons episode. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe. Love you guys.